So friends, we discussed about virial equations of state and two forms of virial equation of state in our previous video. One of the forms of virial equation of state is z is equal to 1 plus b dash p plus c dash p square where b dash c dash d dash are nothing but the virial coefficient, p is the pressure and z is compressibility factor giving you idea about the deviation from the ideality. We also have seen how A can be clubbed to RT with this expansion series, right? And by substituting A equal to RT, we get left hand side as Z and proportionally uh, to the Z is equal to 1 plus B dash P, we have another form of fetal equation of state with, which is Z is equal to 1 plus B by V plus C upon V square plus D upon V cube. Both these equations are known as virial expansions or virial expressions and the parameter B dash, C dash, D dash and B, C, D are called as virial coefficients. Parameter B dash and B are called second virial coefficient and C dash and C are called third virial coefficients. And the interrelationship mathematical relationship between B and B dash, C and C dash and D and D dash are this. This can be uh, obtained, the relationship can be obtained by setting z is equal to pv bar t right and then solving for p and then eliminate p on the right hand side by substituting z is equal to like p equal to z r t by v and you can get the uh, series in the form of 1 upon v 1 upon v square compare the coefficients and you get the value of uh, like relationship between v dash and b c dash and c and d dash and d however they are not as such required as far as the direct uh, or industrial uses are concerned. The term B by V arises on account of the interaction between a pair of molecule. So, it is called second VDL coefficient, right? And C upon V arises on account of three body interactions or three molecule interaction simultaneously. It is called as a third VDL coefficient. Now, naturally, the interaction between a pair of molecules is much more likely than interaction between three molecules at a time. So, this is very obvious that when there are two molecules, they can interact with each other, but the presence of third molecule will make it difficult for all the three to interact with each other simultaneously. And hence, B will have a more value compared to that of C. So, two body interactions are many more times more common than the three body interactions and the values of B are more than that of C. The contribution to Z of the successively higher order terms will also decrease rapidly. So, that is why the terms B and C are generally not being used. Now, before we proceed further and discuss about the application of Vidal equation of state in, uh, you know, PVT behavior, let us revisit the ideal gas, you know, uh, characteristics. So, because the terms B by V or C by V square of the virial expansions arises on account of the molecular interaction, the virial coefficient B, C would be 0 where no such interactions are existing. That is for the ideal gas. And for the ideal gas, the equation would reduce to Z equal to 1. Here also Z equal to 1 because B dash C dash D dash or B C D are 0. And since Z is equal to 1, you can say PV is equal to RT, which is something which we already know. As P tends to 0, V becomes infinite and hence terms like B by V and C by V square also becomes 0. So, for an ideal gas, Z has to be equal to 1. Let us try to understand applications of real equation of state. So, the two forms of real expansions are both infinite series. So, up to which term we should use real equation of state, whether second term, third term, fourth term, right? So, for engineering purpose, their use is practical only where convergence is very rapid. That is, when there are maximum two or three terms which we are using. So, Z is equal to 1 plus B dash P plus C dash P square. This is more than sufficient or Z is equal to 1 plus B by V plus C upon V square. So, generally we do not go beyond third, but if it is a linear term, you know, linear equation like Z is equal to 1 plus B dash P, it is good. So, if we can prove that, okay, for this region up to this range of pressure or temperature, we can use uh, Z is equal to 1 plus B dash P, which is a linear equation, then we can use that virial equation in a much easier 
V. So, this is realized for gases and vapors at low to moderate pressure that we do not need to go beyond third parameter. So, this, uh, this graph which is shown here is termed as compressibility factor chart and it is being drawn for a fluid and you can see this is experimentally drawn where Z is plotted as a function of P for various temperature values. If you, if you observe this plot, there are few things which are coming out of this particular plot. The first and foremost is that up to some pressure, Z as a function of P can be represented by a straight line. You can just see this. So, this is more or less a straight line till some value of P, right, for all temperature, irrespective of the temperature, you can do that, yeah. As the temperature increases, the, the range of pressure for which the straight line approximation can work increases. So, what I mean to say is that as the temperature increases from this to this, till this point almost you can say that the, you know, uh, representation is straight line. So, the range of pressure increases as temperature increases, but for all temperatures up to some range of pressure, you can say that Z is a function of P, which is a linear term, which is a very encouraging thing because we can just say that Z is equal to 1 plus B dash P. So, we can, we can first get that information from this particular diagram, right. The other thing which we can get from this diagram is that as the temperature increases, see, irrespective of pressure, right, you are almost hovering around 1 and you can say that the gas would behave ideally, which we already know that for lower pressure, see, as lower pressure, for irrespective of temperature, the value of Z is 1, as P tends to 0, right, Z is 1 and for high temperature, right, irrespective of pressure, the value of Z is almost 1 and hence for high temperature and low pressure, you can say that the gas is going to behave ideally, right. Now, we can prove mathematically also that Z can be 1 plus P dash P. So, this is something which is already discussed, right. So, thus the tangent to an isotherm at P tends to 0 is a good approximation of the isotherm from P tends to 0 to some finite pressure that is this. How do you do, go with? So, if I differentiate Z with respect to P at constant temperature, the expression I am talking about is this. When I differentiate this with respect to P at constant temperature, I get 1 plus B dash, sorry, B dash plus 2 C dash P plus 3b dash p square likewise. And if I say that this is to be done tangentially at p tends to 0, all the terms containing p would vanish and what we have is this. So, the, the slope of the line z as a function of p is nothing but b dash. So, this is, see, if I like this, the equation of this line is what? y is equal to mx plus c. So, what is C? C is 1. So, I will write 1. What is Y? Is Z. So, it is Z. What is X? Is P. And what is the slope? The slope is B dash. So, we can say that the line which is representing this as an equation Z is equal to 1 plus B dash P, which is nothing but the Virial equation up to the second term. And hence, for all practical purposes, at any given temperature, up to some pressure, right, up to some pressure, you can represent the Virial equation of state with single term and that is Z is equal to 1 plus B dash, like two terms, that is Z is equal to 1 plus B dash P and you do not need to go for a higher order terms, correct. So, a more common form of this equation, then you can re represent it like this. Z is equal to 1 plus B P by R T, where I replace B dash with B upon R T, which we have discussed in this, right. So, Z becomes 1 plus B P by R T is a very common expression which can be used up to some pressure and this pressure can even go to 10 bars, right. So, at higher temperatures, naturally this pressure range is more, right. See, other form of equation may be truncated to two terms and that is this. Z is equal to 1 plus B by V. 
right for pressure above the range of applicability but below the critical temperature the virial equation truncated to three terms will provide good result that is z is equal to 1 plus b by v plus c upon v square will be a good representation of virial equation of state right this can be converted into a cubic equation and solution for v can be obtained by some kind of iterative method so when we meet next time we will talk about how to solve a problem where we can get the value of volume given pressure and temperature using two different kinds of virial equation of state thank you